All right. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Explore Bible Study. What's going on? We have a lot of things going on this month. I'm excited for all the things that are happening this month. Um, a lot of cool things that are happening. We have a couple's game night happening. Come on now. We have a family game night happening. We got a Super Bowl party happening. And we also have our discipleship kicking off next Monday. I'm excited for that. A lot of people have signed up. So we have a game night February 25th. We have a Super Bowl February 13th. And then we have our couples night February 11th here at the Hub. Our discipleship kicks off. 180 discipleship is going to be amazing. I'm excited. So we have a lot of things happening this month. And then as the months go on, we're going to have more things. We also have Tuesday, we have our workshop for uh, Google and understanding how to use the computer with Google Classroom and um, Google Docs and all that good stuff. And so make sure that you're here for that. I believe it's at 7 o'clock, right? 7 o'clock it starts. And then um, also we have a, a lot of uh, other things coming up as far as for workshops and different things like that. So I'm excited for what Hub Vineland is doing. Um, we want to also encourage everyone that is watching online, as well as if you're here and you are a moderator or you're a part of it, to um, – Send stars. We have uh, the ability now to send stars on our lives. And so uh, it was pretty cool to see that uh, Saturday with all the stars coming in. And so if you hear something that's good or you just want to bless this ministry with stars, do so um, as you feel led by the Lord. And what we're going to do is we're going to pray and we're going to begin. Now, I know I'm not Prophet Marisol because I'm Eric and uh, I'm giving her a break today because she is getting ready to uh, preach and teach Friday yeah. at Prophet Alex's church in uh, Ghana, and uh, we're excited for her to be teaching on deliverance Friday, so we're going to be in Delaware on Friday um, with our brothers and our sisters in Christ. It's going to be amazing, and then she's also writing a book, an e-book that's going to be coming out very shortly. And uh, I'm not going to give you the title or nothing. You got to wait to see it. It's going to be powerful. And I believe it's going to bless a lot of people. So she's been grinding and working really hard this week. And so I told her, I said, do you want me to teach um, tonight? And she said, yes, praise the Lord. Amen. And I was like, okay, cool. So I'll do it. Um, and so we're going to continue with the Beatitudes. That's where we're at, right? We've been teaching on the Beatitudes. And so we're going to pray. And get right into the word of God. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for what you're going to do this evening. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the truth of your word. We thank you, Lord God, that your word is what gives us life. Your word is what, Lord God, brings us to new places and new understanding of who you are. And so, Lord, I pray tonight that our minds will be open, that our heart will be open, that our spirit, Lord God, and our soul, Lord God, will connect directly to you, Father, and that we would hear, Lord God, and receive downloads from heaven to, Lord God, propel us, Lord God, to the next in our lives. And so we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. So last week, she taught on blessed are those who are, or blessed are the, uh, the meek, for they will inherit the earth. And she talked about meekness, right? And we all got scriptures uh, for meekness, and if you haven't um, gotten those scriptures or you weren't a part of those classes, please go back and check our archives on our class on our um, page. All our videos are on archive, so anytime you want to go back and get something, and maybe you missed something during the teaching that I did or she did or anyone else did, they're on archive um, in the video section of our Facebook page. You can actually check out all the videos there. Um, the information to give is going to be at the bottom pin. It's also going to be on the screen periodically, and we will take offering um, during uh, this, uh, the end of this night. Um, so prepare yourself for that as well. So I have the wonderful task of teaching, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied, or they shall be filled. And uh, of course... Uh, 
Marisol was like, you better read it from the Amplified version. So I made sure I got an Amplified version on my computer. Because I asked her, I said, she, I, I was reading it. She was like, just Amplified. I said, okay, well, I'm going to get all my scriptures to be Amplified tonight so that I am in 100% alignment with what she's teaching throughout the weeks prior, right? So Matthew 5, 6 in the Amplified says, blessed, joyful, nourished by God's goodness are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, those who actively seek right standing with God, for they will be completely satisfied. Okay? And so as I began to study for this tonight, um, the words that kind of stuck out to me are the ones that I'm going to break down, and then I'm going to give you scripture just like she did um, pertaining to certain words and certain things. And so the first word that I want you to write down if you're writing in your notes is the word nourished. The word nourished, okay? Um, because when we are hungry, it's because we're looking for nourishment, right? If you're hungry, you're looking for nourishment because you feel like what? You ever, you ever get to the point where you're real hungry and you have stomach pains, because you're, you're hungry, you feel like that thing is empty, and you're like, what in the world is going on? This is an empty stomach right now. I need some food, right? And, uh, and so it says here that we are blessed because we are nourished by God, okay? When we're hungry, we get nourished by his goodness. And the word nourish means provide with food or substance necessary, watch this, for growth, health, and good condition, right? Think about the word of God and think about your hunger for God. Your hunger for God should never stunt your growth. It should always cause you to grow. The word of God should always bring health to you. It shouldn't bring sickness. And it keep you in good condition, like when you see, and, and I'll use myself for, for the example, when I was in my early walk with the Lord in my first six, seven years, I did not like reading the Word of God. I like listening to worship. I listened to a preaching every now and then. But for me, it was just I went to church. I was involved in ministry. But I didn't really read the Word like that, right? And so many of the decisions that we make, based off of, um, or many of the decisions that we make are based off of whether we're nourished or not in the word. The nourishment of the word only comes to those who are hungry for it. If you're not hungry for the word, you'll never be nourished by God's goodness. You'll never understand what it is to be filled and satisfied by him. So what we'll do is we'll grab for everything that can fill us. And we'll look for everything that can fill us. We'll look for sports. We'll look for activities. We'll look for family outings. We'll look for um, illegal activities. We'll look for all kinds of stuff, but never really understanding that the hunger that you're feeling has nothing to do with a natural hunger, but it's a spiritual hunger. And your belly is not just your belly, but your belly is your spirit. And so what do they say? Stir up the, the gift of God, right? Rivers of living water will flow from your belly. So the spirit of God and your spirit man and the thing that you're trying to um, nourish is right here in the belly. It's, it's funny how he says hunger because many of us are very good at eating, but we're not good at eating. We can eat real good natural food, but we can't eat the word. We can't stomach it sometimes. Sometimes it makes us vomit. Um, because why? Because it's 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 a it's a uh, a sweet thing to taste, but sometimes it goes down bitter. And so you have to be careful that you're not hungering and thirsting and trying to get your growth, your health, and your good condition from other things that don't even give life. And for years, that's what we do. So it sustains us. the The, the hunger is for us to be sustained by God first before anything else. And a lot of times what we do is we get hungry for God when we're interested in what God is saying, but when it's something that we're not interested in, we don't have hunger for it. 
Like, a lot of people are hungry for the New Testament, but not hungry for the Old Testament. They're hungry for what the, what, what the, the latest flashy preacher will preach, but not what the word actually says. And so we have to be careful that our appetite is not driven by our flesh. Because you could be in church and be driven by an appetite of flesh to the word. And you know how that happens? I don't like what he just preached. So I'm going to use it as a preference. So my hunger is, has preference. I'll be hungry if you're coming to preach something that's going to tell me that I'm going to get a new car. Or that I'm going to help out and, and I'm, going to be, I'm going to be blessed and the next season is going to be profitable. and all. But if I tell you your sin needs to be taken care of, oh, I'm not hungry for that. It says you hunger and thirst. You're going to, you, either you're hungry or you're not. This is not a buffet. You don't go in the line and pick what you want. This is the word of God. It's bread and that's it. So we got to understand that when we're hungry, it's to sustain us. Um, I'm giving you a first scripture, Ephesians 5.29. Ephesians 5.29. And all of these are going to be in Amplified Version. Ephesians 5.29 says, For no one ever hated his own body, but instead he nourishes and protects and cherishes it, just as Christ does the church. So think about that. You are, are hating yourself if you don't nourish yourself. Remember, remember, I don't know if this still happens, but maybe, it probably does. But I remember there was a big deal when these supermodels were just, they were too skinny. They were putting their finger in their mouth and throwing up. They had, they had what's it, bulimia, right? And they had this big uh, news um, like a uh, report on it, and it was all over the news, and it was like these girls in high school now are doing this. They're eating lunch and then going to the, to the bathroom, and they're throwing up, or they're doing this, and they're, they're trying to starve themselves so they can look like the supermodels. And I think that we need to look at this spiritually and say, we want to look so much like the world, we're starving ourselves. We're starving ourselves to look like what the world image is giving us when really God is saying, I'm the bread of life. All you need to do is be hungry for me and you will be satisfied. You're not going to have to go after fake bread. You're not going to have to go over uh, to, to sweets and all these other things that the world is offering us or the system or the adversary is offering us um, throughout the world. And it's happening all the time. And it says that no one who's ever hated his own body, right? So think about that. You hate yourself spiritually if you don't feed yourself the word. You need to write that down. Because you can't say you love yourself but hate your spirit. Or hate the things that are going to feed your spirit. I said, you hate yourself if you don't feed yourself in the spirit, if you don't nourish your spirit man. So you have to be willing to be hungry for the Lord. You know, a lot of people say hunger is what causes revival and hunger is what causes breakthrough and hunger. And, and, and it's true. But if you're just getting hungry just for revival and not for a personal revival, if you're getting hungry for breakthrough, but not for you to break through and understand this word, then you're hungering still on a preference. It's still twisted. It's still what we would call wicked, right? Because wicked is, 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 is twisting things. And so we have to be careful on how we're looking at the word of God, because a lot of times we think we're nourishing ourselves, but we're just nourishing our preference, we're nourishing how we feel and how we like to feel and what we want to do and not what God is truly saying in his word. And it says here that Christ nourishes us. It says as Christ does the church, he nourishes the body. And so if we ignore the hunger pains, hello, I'm hungry, but what you're giving me, God, I don't want to eat. I'd rather eat what they're giving me because they're giving me a steak and they're giving me this and they're giving me that. They're really making me fat. But now you're becoming sluggish. 
What happens when you eat a real good meal and you get real big and you're just sitting there and you're just like, oh, I don't want to move, right? That's the same thing that happens in the spirit when you feed your flesh so much. Now you don't have the appetite to feed your spirit. You get caught up in just being lazy. You look at the Bible and you're like, it's right there. But it's easier for me to grab my remote right here. And so the remote, the TV, all you got to do is hit buttons. But here you got to flip through the pages and you got to read and you got to write things down. And so you have to have a hunger for God before anything else. If you don't have a hunger for God, you're malnourished in the spirit. Because you could be, listen, I understand that we can have a hunger to be together. We can have a hunger for our gifting. We can have a hunger for all these things. But if we don't hunger after God first, we're still eating wrong. Does that make sense? And so we have to be careful with that because he is the sustainer of life. He is our substance. He is our substance. He is everything that we need. And so why would we go to false um, um, substances and false uh, um, uh, uh, food than eating the real deal? I'll tell you why. It's the same reason why we don't eat organic stuff all the time. You know why? Because it's expensive. It costs. When you go to the supermarket, you can buy a frozen pizza. It's going to be $4. But if you want to buy and make your own pizza, it's going to cost a lot more to buy those ingredients and put it yourself and do the work to get it in the oven to enjoy it. Now, some people might do that. But some people will be like, it's easier for me to just get that frozen boy and just throw it in there. It'll be done in 20 minutes. Cut it up, and we're eating, but we don't know what we're eating, right? So think about that. We get hungry, and we don't even know. Like, I was telling them back there, and, and we're going to probably make a switch on that, so I hope y'all, y'all, your palates can change because the, all those creamers back there, there's no cream in it. If you look at the ingredients, it's, it's vegetable oil. It's just vegetable oil. That's all it is. So we've been drinking vegetable oil in our bodies thinking it's cream. Now, I know, I know Marisol has an organic one at home, and I was like, let me see, because this got vegetable oil, we're throwing it out too. And I looked, and it was just, ex- it was safe. The organic stuff, it might cost a little bit more, but it's better for your body, right? So watch this. It might cost a little bit more to be hungry for God, but it's better for you. And we can lose hunger real quick when we feed ourselves stuff that ain't good for us. Because it's easier for us to eat that. It's easier for us to go to a fast food restaurant and go through the the drive-thru and pick up an order, right? I remember back in the day, I haven't had one in probably like five years, but I remember back in the day, our thing was this. We used to go through Wendy's for the five for five. Because it's $5, and you got five people in your family, you pay $25 for a whole dinner. Hey, it was, but then you're hungry two hours later, and the toilet is, you're visiting that toilet too. (laughs) Especially if you eat Taco Bell and everything else. Now, I'm not saying this because I don't want you to feel conviction, okay? I'm not saying that. Eat what you want. It's your body. But what I'm saying is this, is that it's the same thing in the spirit. We can go through drive-thrus. You know what that is? Coming to the altar but never changing because you don't read your Bible at home. Just lay hands on me, but I'm not hungry enough to feed myself. And so we have to be careful with that because now what we become is fast. We become uh, uh, fast food junkies in the spirit with God. We don't want his bread. Just give us the little bit that we can get right here, that it's a fast food restaurant right here, instead of sitting at home and having the meal with him. You understand? And so we have to be careful with that. We have to be careful that we're not causing malnourishment to us spiritually because we want to fast forward with God. 1 Timothy 4 and 6. Go there. 1 Timothy 4 and 6. Six. 
When you got it, say, yeah, I got it. All right. It says, if you point out these instructions to the brothers and sisters, you will be good servant. You will be a good servant of Christ Jesus. Constantly, watch this, nourished through study on the words of the faith and of the good Christian doctrine, which you have been closely, which you closely have followed, right? Now, which you have closely followed. Think about what nourishes you. Studying. Why do you think that most people that come to this hub, you become hungry for the word? Because we study it. We're not doing a drive-by with this thing. We take our time in the word. You got to learn the word. It's a bread. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a meal for us to have. It's the, it's the spiritual uh, manna, uh, if, if, if you want to call it that, for us. Okay? So now, as we're talking about you know, the nourishing part of God, it's about hunger, right? So what does the Bible talk about hunger? Well, I'm not going to give you, uh, I'm going to give you four um, biblical scriptures that we're going to break down tonight, and then we're going to talk about thirst, and then we're going to talk about the real reason why hunger and thirst is so important, all right? So let's look at Proverbs 19 and 15, Proverbs 19 and 15. Again, we're reading the Amplified Version, Numbers 19 and 15. I mean, excuse me, Proverbs. Proverbs 19. I was thinking numbers. Proverbs 19 and 15. It says this, laziness cast one into a deep sleep, unmindful of lost opportunities. And then the idle person will suffer hunger. So if you're just sitting around, you're going to always be hungry. What I say, what, what do I say here a lot? Closed mouth don't get fed, right? And the Bible tells us that an idle person will suffer hunger. What is an idle person? That's someone that just stays stuck. When you're stuck, you can't move forward. You can't move back. You, can, you ever been in a, a car where it gets stuck in the mud and you're revving that thing up and you're trying to get it out and, it, and you need a push in order to get the car out of where it is? Or if you get stuck on snow or ice or whatever it may be, an idle person is someone who leaves their life on neutral. There's no, they can hit the gas all day, but they're not going nowhere. There's no movement. Neutral is not supposed to be the life of a believer. Neutral is not where we're supposed to be. An idle person will suffer hunger, and a lazy person will go into deep sleep. We're not supposed to be lazy, and we're not supposed to be idle as believers, especially if you claim to be an apostolic believer. We don't have time to be lazy, and we don't have time to be idle. We're always moving. We're always doing something. God is calling us to do something. We're, we're, we're praying. We're seeking. We're, we're reading. We're developing. We're, we're, we're uh, you know, creating solutions. All these things are important in the life of, of, of a believer. And when we remain idle, we stay hungry. And he says, those who are hungry, look at what it says, and are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness blessed. So here's the thing. An idle person can't be blessed. Until you realize you're hungry because you're stuck, you'll move. Next Proverbs, Proverbs 10.3. Proverbs 10, 3. Share this with somebody as you're watching this online. And don't forget, you can send stars. Proverbs 10, 3. It says, the Lord will not allow the righteous to hunger. 
God will meet all his needs. Somebody say amen. But he will reject, look at this, and cast away the craving of the wicked. So think about that. The Lord's not going to let the righteous go hungry. He's not going to let us go hungry. I'll give you a definition of hunger, I mean of righteousness. Watch this. And this is uh, something that um, I saw in, in not this Bible, but, um, no, yes, this Bible right here, the NASB in the back in my Greek lexicon concordance. It talks about righteousness. It is the, and, and you need to write this down because this is so powerful. Righteousness is the external representation of an internal observ observance of eternal precepts. I'm going to say it again. Righteousness is the external representation of an internal observance of eternal precepts. In other words, righteousness is the, the righteousness that you are uh, seeking and that you're going after and that you're willing that you're wanting to be becomes an external representation of who you are on the outside because on the inside you're observing an eternal thing. Because righteousness does not come from the earth. It comes from God. It comes from the from eternity. And so when we choose to observe the eternal precepts or the eternal things of God, what we're saying is, God, I choose to follow in your way. I am going to uphold your way, and I'm going to live according to your way. And his way is those who are hungry and thirsty for righteousness are blessed. And what was blessed? You guys have your notes from a couple weeks ago. What did, what did Prophet Marisol say blessed is? Go ahead and go to your notes. What is it? Fortunate and secure. What else? Huh? Inwardly peaceful. Okay? So all those things happen to people who are hungry for God. When you're hungry for God, God is not going to allow you to go through um, um, uh, tur turmoil or torment. Because why? Why would he be a good, he wouldn't be a good God if those who are seeking after him, he would let them continue to be tormented. It is the blessing of God that causes torment to go away. But it's our responsibility to seek after him for our torment to go. You got to realize God wants to bless you, but you got to partner with the blessing. You cannot be blessed if you sit idle. That's what a lot of people do. Oh, I went to a conference. Praise God. I went to a, an event. I went to this. I went to that. I saw a live. I did this. And then what happens? You go home and you do nothing. And then you're mad why God ain't bless you. Well, it's because you're idle. You heard something and ignored it on the way home and thought that God was just going to do it for you because you heard it. You can hear the word, but doing the word is what, what brings the blessing. And so when you're hungry for God, you're not going to be, um, excuse me, when you uh, hunger for righteousness, God will not allow you to go hungry. He will not allow it, okay? I know, listen, I've had moments in my life where God has told me, or, or, or we, Marisol and I, I remember one time we were living in Maryland, and uh, God has always shown us favor, just amazing favor. And uh, I had a friend, well, I, yeah, he was a friend at the time, and I didn't know what it was. He, he worked for the military, right? Andrews Air Force Base is where he worked. And Marisol and I, we were like scrounging pennies to eat, to, to do stuff. Like for a year, I'm not lying to you, for a whole year, all we ate was macaroni and cheese and chicken nuggets. That was our meal and hot dogs. That was it. We couldn't afford nothing else. It was just completely, that was it. And so one day I get a knock on the door 
And we had no groceries whatsoever. And he's like, hey, I want to take you somewhere. And I'm like, all right, cool. And he took me to the commissary at the Andrews Air Force Base. Now, I don't know if you've ever been to a commissary or been inside of one. It's like their own world of supermarkets and everything else. And so he grabs two carts and goes, all right, let's go. And he took me through the whole thing. And he filled up both carts. And he paid for us. And, we came, and when we came home, I was like, it was so much food, we didn't even know what to do because we haven't had that much food, right? But what was happening during that time in Maryland for us, we became hungry for God because there was nothing else for us to do. We didn't have no friends. We didn't have no family. We had acquaintances that were there, but, and, and some of them were, became really good friends with us, and they're still friends with us, and we love them. But at the time... We just had God. It was Marisol and I and God. And the hunger brought the blessing. The hunger brought the favor. The hunger brought the provision. And what God is saying to us is that if you lose your hunger, you lose my hand. You lose my hand if you lose my hunger. I mean, excuse me, if you lose your hunger. Because if Oscar's hungry, right, and he comes to my house, he's like, Pop, I'm hungry. I, I, as, a, as a man of God, I'm going to feed him, right? Who prepares the meal for him? Even if it's me putting something in the microwave, it's my hands. So when we, so when we sit there, watch this. Oscar could sit in my house and be hungry as all get out and not say nothing because he expects me to think I know he's hungry. And we had that with God as well. You don't say nothing to him, but you expect him because he's God to know that you're hungry. No, you show someone that you're hungry by opening your mouth and say, I'm hungry. Our kids are good at doing that. I'm hungry. There's food. In there. There's nothing in the house. The pantry's full. There's nothing to eat because there's no, there's no goodies for them. But they're, they're hungry, right? We have, what does the Bible say? That we come to God like childlike faith. Adults are really good at being quiet when they're hungry. But kids, if they're hungry, they're going to let you know. Especially babies. That's why babies need milk. And they need their nourishment early on so that they can grow strong. We don't even teach believers when they first come to Christ to be hungry for him. We teach them the 101s of our churches. So they know more about the church than they know about the hunger for God. And we can't do that anymore. They need to know that they need to be hungry for God because he's the one that's going to provide for them. He's the one that is the provision for all of us. Amen. John 635. Let's go there. Jesus replied to them, I am the bread of life. The one who comes to me will never be hungry. And those who believe in me will never be thirsty, which we're going to talk about next. For that one will be sustained spiritually. So you got to ask yourself, if you're hungry spiritually, you have not come to Christ yet. Listen to what I'm saying here. I know you accepted him. Accepting him and staying with him are two different things. You can accept Christ all day, but are you walking with him to, for him to be the bread of your life? And so the Bible tells us that the one who comes to me will never be hungry. Not him coming to them. We expect Jesus to come with a plate of bread. And it said those who come to me. So you have to make an initial step to be filled if you're hungry. And you can't be um, filled or actually have any hunger if you're not going after him, if you're not seeking after him. 
if you're not looking to God as your sustainer. You know, and, and what happens is this, is because we love mammon. It got real quiet. I said, we love mammon. So mammon becomes our God. Now we expect that to fill us when money can't do it. All it is is paper from a tree. They gave value to it. But you had value before money was even made. My God is worth more than that money that's made. And he has everything for me. Why do I have to be scared that I'm not going to be provided for if I'm hungering after him? If I'm going after God with everything in me, he's going to supply my every need. And that's what God does. He supplies needs. I'm pretty sure if I pass the mic around or we pass the, 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 um, the audience mic around, everyone here will have a story of how God supplied your needs somehow. Oh, praise God. Amen. Well, then I am in alignment. Beautifully. So when we talk about provision, you see how Maddox is running after his daddy? That's how we're supposed to be running after God. Just like that, with a bag of chips and all that, just running. (laughs) With a snack and all that, running toward God, right? Why? Because, watch this, when the presence of the Father moves... You got to know that your dad, well, he's not here. Where is he? Oh, he's over here. Okay. I'm going to run after him because I know that he's going to give me what I need. And what happens is God's presence moves, but because we've been a fatherless generation, we don't even know that he's gone because we're used to fathers being gone. We're just used to it. So his presence doesn't mean much to us because we're used to being fatherless. And when he does come in, it's weird because we don't know how to interact with a father. You see what I'm saying? Because we never had a father provide for us the way that he's supposed to provide. When Jesus comes and the big brother goes, dad wants to provide for you. You're like, I don't know what that looks like. Because all I've done my whole life is struggle for me. So spiritually, we even do that in the spirit. We struggle trying to read the word and do this and this and that. And God's like, all you have to do is ask me. I'm your father. If you hunger for me, I'm going to show you everything. And so we have to really get to understand what hunger is. And hunger is not just feed my belly. Hunger is sustaining me. It's a sustaining. Let's look at Revelation chapter 7, 16 and 17. Revelation 7, 16, and 17. I'm just going to run through it. It says, they will no longer, watch this, they will hunger no longer nor thirst anymore, nor will the sun beat down on them nor uh, any heat. For the lamb who is in the center of the throne will be their shepherd and he will be he will guide them to springs of waters of the waters of life and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes giving them eternal comfort you realize that we're going to go into a time where there'll be no more hunger and it's not just i'm not talking about physically i'm talking about spiritually there's not going to be a hunger drought you're not going to go through times where you feel famished or you feel like you're in a famine spiritually, those days are going to come to an end one day because God says there will be no more hunger, nor will there be any more thirst because the lamb is going to be our shepherd for eternity and we'll have eternal comfort with him. I don't know about you, but that's exciting to know that as long as I stay hungry, I'm going to get to a point where I won't have to hunger anymore when I get with him for eternity. So it's okay to have hunger pains and feel hungry and continue to go after him because eventually we're going to end up where there is no hunger and there is no thirst and there is no crying and no pain and all these things. And so let's talk about thirst. All right? Anybody ever been real, real thirsty before? Like real thirsty. Like your whole mouth just dry as a desert. 
I'm going to tell you when you get real thirsty sometimes. I haven't done this in a long time. Since I was like 17. When you smoke weed, you get that cotton mouth. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Don't act like y'all been saved y'all whole life. If you never smoked, praise God. But if you did, you know what I'm talking about. It don't matter how much water you put in your mouth. You'll drink a whole gallon of water, your mouth just dry. Why? Because you're getting high off of the wrong thing. And so the world got us cotton mouthed. Because we keep on thirsting after the wrong thing. It doesn't satisfy us. It don't matter what it is that the world provides for us, it will, even if it's a good thing. I'm not saying that the world provides only bad things, guys. You know, it's wrong for us to think as believers that we only get bad things from the world. That's not true. God created the world. There's good things in the world. People corrupt things. But even in those good things, they don't satisfy the way God does. We can have great experiences, but they don't satisfy like God. And when you have the good things and you have the bad things, what that does is that's a mixture of telling you how much you need God. And the Bible says in Psalm 42, 1 and 2, Psalm 42, 1 and 2. There's an a, a amazing uh, worship song probably from the 90s. As the deer panted for the water, so my soul long give after thee. If you don't know it, it's because you're too young. Or you were heathen, one or the other. No, I'm just playing. So, like, um, <laughs> uh, so that song is about how the deer pants for water, right? It pants for the brook. It longs for the brook. And David goes and says, as the deer pants longingly for the water, for the water brooks, so my soul thirst after you. So my soul thirst after you. So watch this. Your soul can be dry. And guess who loves dry places? They love dry places. And so when you start feeling your soul dry up, you're giving an access, uh, uh, you're giving a, 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 beaker, a, a beaker signal off to the enemy saying, there's room. There's dry places here. This one's coming. This, one, this one's going to give us an entrance. Why? Because the dry places is where they love to be. He goes, my soul, verse 2, my life, my inner self thirsts for God. For the living God, when I come, when will I come and see the face of God? My soul longs after God. You have to have a longing for him. Now, here's the thing. I want to I say this. You can long for God, but don't forget that you live in a world, too. Like, long for him. Be passionate for him. But take care of your stuff. Because some people get real crazy and they want to long after God and they want to lay on their face all day long. Their bills ain't being paid. That's not what longing for God means. It means that my soul just thirsts after him in everything that I do. I want him to continuously give me living water. Continue to shower me in your presence. Give me your mercy and your grace, Lord. Continue to keep my soul saturated in the things of you. Because when it gets dry, we end up with critters. When it's dry, we end up with, 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 with little creepy crawly things in our lives. And David was like, I see how the deer pants for the water. My soul is like that, Lord. And think about how a deer pants for the water. He bows. 
A deer has to bow down and lap the water with his mouth and his tongue. That's how he does it. He was saying, I will bow down before you. My, 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 my whole being is humble before you, Lord, and I thirst after your water. I thirst after you, God, because it's not good to be thirsty. And the worst thing is this. You can have food, but if you got nothing to drink with it, Anybody ever have a meal and you don't have nothing to drink with it? Ain't that the worst? It's like I need something to kind of help this down, right? Watch this. I think I told this story before. My nephew was very small. He's grown man now, baby, married, all that stuff. We took him to Burger King one time, and we told him, listen, don't, eat all your, don't drink all your orange juice because you have a biscuit. And if you drink all your orange juice, I'm not buying you another one. I told him straight up, I'm not buying him another one. He thought I was playing. He drank the whole orange juice. He goes, Theo, I drank all the orange juice. I said, you're going to hate eating that biscuit. <laughs> and Marisol and I, we made him eat the biscuit. And he was eating it, and it was like, like, like glue in his mouth. Because, you know, a biscuit gets real... Like, uh, like pasty and stuff. And he was like, I didn't want to orange. I was like, I told you that if you drank all your orange juice, you're not getting another one. And we, I don't care. And we made him, we made him eat that sandwich. Lesson learned, because he never did it again. But here's the thing. We could have a lot of food, bread. And eventually, we're going to stop eating it if we don't have no water. Because why? Because that bread is going to get real nasty. It's going to taste weird. It's going to get, it's going to get real sticky. And it's, it's going to be harder to eat because there's no water going with it. You need some type of water to help you with the food that you're eating. So I can hunger for God but not be thirsty for him. Or I could be real thirsty for him and not hunger. But you cannot do either one. You have to do both. He goes, those who hunger and thirst for righteousness will be satisfied. So some of us, we will, we're doing good. I'm reading my word. I'm reading my word. But your soul is dry. And you're wondering why it's not working. It's because you're not doing both. You're not giving the opportunity for you to take a drink of the well. You're just hungry all the time. And, and, and listen... We have to learn balance. Jesus didn't say those who hunger for righteousness. He said hunger and thirst. So he knows there's going to be a thirst in us that the world is going to try to quench. And there's going to be a hunger the world is going to try to quench. And so some of us, we're good at being hungry for God, but we're still not thirsty enough for him. Or we're, thirst, we're, we're good at having our thirst quenched, but we're still not hungry enough for him. And that's the reason why there's not the, the, the breakthrough or the blessing in your life. You understand? And so when David is saying this, I can imagine him sitting in the cave, running from his, for his life and, and saying, Lord, I just long after you because I don't care what anybody else says. I don't care what anybody else is doing. I'm thirsting for you. And I'm hungry for you. Are you hungry for God tonight, and are you thirsty for him tonight? Can he be your satisfier? Can he sustain you? Can he sustain your family? Can he take care of who you are? Isaiah 55, 1 and 2. Isaiah 55, 1 and 2. says, everyone who thirsts, say everyone, who thirsts, come to the waters. You know what's a beautiful thing about God's water? It's not based off your denomination. It's not based off of your affiliation. It's not based off of your ethnicity. It's not based off of what you grew up in, none of that. He says, everyone who 
thirst, come to the waters. And then he goes, and you who have no money, come buy grain and eat. Hold on. How I'm buying something I ain't got no money for? How is it that God is allowing me to buy things and there's no money? He said, and you who have no money, buy grain and eat. In other words, if you're thirsty, when you come to the water, provision coming, there's going to be supernatural breakthrough coming. There's going to be things that you don't even know they come and they're there. And you don't even have to pay for it. It's just there. It said, buy grain and eat it. But you got to come to the water first. You have to be thirsty. You have to be hungry. And then it says, come buy wine and milk. So not only are you getting grain to eat, but they're also getting something. The wine represents what? The wine represents the covenant. The wine represents the, uh, the, 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 um, the sacrifice of Jesus. The milk represents provision or the land of milk and honey. It represents the crossover of the Jordan. It represents Jericho falling in your life. It represents that you've taken down some giants. There's wine and there's milk available for you, and you don't even have to pay for it. He said, come buy it, but you don't have money. He said, supernaturally, I'm going to provide. If you just hunger for me, come thirsty to me. Come to the waters. I love it. Without money and without cost, simply ask, accept it as a gift from God. Could you imagine you go to the supermarket tomorrow and you go there and you have your whole entire uh, uh, your, your cart filled up? Because, you know, you're ready to do your compra, your shopping, and all that stuff. And then you get to the line, and they go, oh, you know what? It's free. What you going to do? You're going to be real happy and blessed. You're going to be out there. You're going to be, you'll be praise dancing with that cart on the way to the car. <laughs> all the way to the car. All the way there. People going to be looking at you like, what's wrong with you? Just praising God, right? Why? Because it came as a gift. And God is telling us here in Isaiah that wine and milk and grain and, 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 and the stuff that we are supposed to buy, if we hunger and thirst after him, they're gifts to us. We don't even have to buy it. The people that buy things are the ones that don't have the provider. He provides. If somebody provides for you, you're not buying it. You're pro he's pro they're providing it. Right? And so there has to be a provider in order for provision to come. So if you're not hungry enough for the provider, your provision won't come. If you're not thirsty enough for the provider, your provisions won't come. I want, I want wine and milk. I want grain to eat. I want to trust God with that. And then it said, without money and without cost, which is interesting. So watch this. God's currency does not have to do with our money. You want provision from God, get hungry for him. You want to see God move on your behalf, then go ahead and watch this. Thirst after him. And you're going to see wine and milk and bread and grain all come to you without having to buy it. Verse 2, it says, why do you spend money for that which is not bread? Why do we spend our money on things that don't feed us? Why do we spend our money? And I'm not saying, listen, I don't want you to, to, to take it wrong and say that you can't spend your money on things that are going to bring pleasure to you. God gives us a life to, to enjoy, right? But at the same time, we got to know our limits and know how much of what, what it is that we're doing. Because we can get real crazy real quick. And so we have to be careful with that. He said, why do you spend money for that which is not bread and all your earnings for what does not satisfy? Literally saying, and, and that's what happened. I mean, uh, you remember back in the day when you were younger? I always say that, but some of y'all are young. So when I was younger, right, <laughs> when I was younger, that's not a shot to y'all. I'm just saying y'all younger. When I was younger, 
I remember when I, when I first had my job, and I don't, I don't think I was with Marisol at the time. And um, no, I wasn't. And every Friday that I got paid was club weekend. So I just blew my money on the clubs. I blew my money in Wildwood. I blew my money in Atlantic City. I blew my money in Cherry Hill. I blew my money in Philadelphia, uh, New York, wherever I wanted to go, right? And I was in these clubs. And then come Monday morning, I was broke. I didn't have nothing. Why? Because I was going out there and spending stuff that didn't satisfy. I was looking for satisfaction in all the wrong places. And there are so many people that are looking for satisfaction in all the wrong places, and they're spending their money for it. And they're wasting their money. They're wasting the God-given provision that God has given them, and they are not satisfied. And it's their earnings. They earned it. It's just like uh, Sapphira and, and um, Ananias and Sapphira. They had their earnings. They sold their property. They didn't have to lie. It was their earnings. And he says here, and your earnings for what does not satisfy. And you know what happens when you start getting unsatisfied with the thing that you're doing? You go to the next level to find another satisfaction. And when that doesn't happen, you go to the next level for another satisfaction. And what happens is, as you're getting satisfied and it doesn't work anymore, what you're really doing is spiraling down. You think you're going up, but you're spiraling down. So you hit rock bottom, and then you realize that the only one that satisfies you is Jesus. He's the only satisfier. I, I have a, a wonderful marriage, beautiful kids at home, all that. But I would not be able to enjoy it if God didn't satisfy me first. And so a lot of people think they find their satisfaction in their family, and that's great. Enjoy your family, be blessed by your family, but they don't satisfy you. Only God does that. Only Jesus does that. And what Jesus does is satisfy you with a family. He satisfies you with friends. He satisfies you with things that are good for you. And then you got to notice when things are drying up, that's not good for you no more. Because anything that dries up, got to go. Because when you stay in a dry situation, you, inv you invite creepy things. Because they love dry situations. That's what they love to be in. And so your earnings for what does not satisfy Listen carefully to me. This is Isaiah. He's a prophet. He's prophesying here. And eat what is good and let your soul delight in abundance. So what do we know that is good? The bread, the word. What do we have in abundance? Well, Jesus said, I came to give you life abundantly. I came to give you life Breathing, ruach, and then I gave it, came to give it to you abundantly. That means that the, the abundance is the, is the um, what I call the icing on top of the cake. You don't need the icing on the cake, but it's nice to have it. It's not something, what happens is we get spoiled and expect icing. Just be happy you got the cake. Be happy that it's come, you know, be happy that it's there. And so when we look at these things and we begin to go in the, in the, um, in the context of nourished and actively seeking God, for they will be completely satisfied, according to Matthew 5, 6 in the Amplified Version, the main thing that you are supposed to seek out is righteousness. If you're not looking to have right standing with God, don't seek him. Because God's not going to do much for somebody who wants to be on the opposite side of who he is. Righteousness is what God wants us to seek. Look at Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. This is going to be our last scripture of the night. Matthew 6, 33. Y'all good? Matthew 6, 33. It says, but first, say first. And it says, most importantly. So there's a first and a most importantly. Seek. Aim at. Strive after your calling. 
that what it says? Strive after your gifting. No, I want you, because I want to make sure y'all understand what I'm saying. Listen to me. I'm telling you what people do. The first thing they do in the morning is to wake up and see how many people are going to follow them. They're waking up to see how much more of an influence they can be because they're influencers. So their aim is never the kingdom. It's theirs. It's their empire. It says, but first and most importantly, seek, aim at, strive after, what? His kingdom. And his righteousness. What does righteousness mean? His way of doing and being right. The attitude and character of God. Boom. Let's stay right there. Let's land there. Let's land the plane right here. The attitude and character of God. This morning I talked on, my, um, on my, um, my Facebook page about integrity. Right? That's an attribute of God. The attribute of God and character of God is righteousness. And so what happens is when we become people who either are self-righteous or self-absorbed, we lose the attribute of God. Because we cannot be self-righteous and self-absorbed and still think we're serving the, the God of heaven and earth. When you become self-absorbed, you're serving yourself. So now you wake up in the morning seeking after you. You seek after yourself. And that's not what the Bible tells us. And it says his way of doing things and being right. So we can say the world will say, you know what, this is how right living is. But is that what the Bible says? Is that what God says about right living? What does God say about right living? Well, he tells us in Matthew 5 that those who hunger and thirst after righteousness will be satisfied. So how do you become satisfied? Well, the first and most important thing is to seek after the reason why you're being satisfied, his kingdom and his righteousness, his way of doing things. You know, I wake up in the morning, and the first thing, I, I don't do a long prayer. I'll be honest with you. I don't do a long prayer because I'll be in my word. So I'm in the word, praying, whatever. I, I do not thank you for another morning to wake up. What am I doing? Seeking first. A lot of people think seeking first is like to just, and, and you can do this, but it's not just all the time just you have things to do. God knows this. Acknowledge him first. Don't acknowledge your phone. Don't acknowledge a text message. Don't, acknowledge, don't even acknowledge your kids. I know you need them, and I know you got to help them. Don't acknowledge your wife, nothing. Acknowledge God. Seek him first. And then what he says here is that when you do this, all things will be given to you also. Think about that. He's like, I'm not trying to, be, I'm not trying to make you selfish, I'm the only one that can really provide for you, so seek me first, and you're going to see how things happen, right? I'm going to give you all an example. Yesterday, I guess the women had an amazing time here teaching about uh, provision and, and what God was going to do and how God, they, they're believing for God to do something great in their lives, and it was amazing, right? So the other night, I think it was uh, Marisol and I have to go to Atlanta. We're leaving to Atlanta. Uh, because Apostle Ryan has his launch, and, you know, we have to be there. It's just going to be amazing. And so I prayed the other night by myself, and I said, Lord, sincerely, I said, Lord, I don't never ask you for money. Like, that, I never pray to God for money. I just don't. I just believe faith, and it'll come. Like, I don't feel like we have to pray for that, right? That's me personally, because I'm seeking him. But I prayed something specific. I said, Lord... I do not want to drive 14 and a half hours. I said, Lord, I don't want to drive 14 and a half hours. And if it be your will, God, <laughs> provide <laughs> a way to fly and get our car and do everything else, right? 
And so I prayed it, and I told Marisol, I said, I'm believing it, that before the end of this week, God is going to show up, and he's going to do it, and I'm just standing on his word, because he said, you know, to come to him boldly and ask him, and not be afraid, and I was like, I did it in faith, and I never, like, I don't treat God like a genie, where I'd be like, Lord, I need $500 here, and I need, I don't do that to him. I just went to him and just said, Lord, if it be your will, please. He knew my heart. I did not want to drive 14 and a half hours. And last night, Marisol came home, and she was like, God provided. Go get the plane tickets. Get the rental car. And we fly out Saturday, right? By somebody's obedience and what the Lord put in their heart, we were blessed. But they didn't know that I prayed that prayer and just said, Lord, if it be your will, I don't want to drive. And he saw, and then the thing is, we ain't even flying Spirit. We're flying Delta. Praise the Lord. That's even better. Yeah, Delta, it did. It came out, it came out cheaper than Spirit. So praise the Lord. But the, the moral of the story was this. The moral of the story is this, is that I don't say this to be boastful or to say, like, you know, oh, my gosh, um, look at what God did. It's more like I just prayed a simple prayer. And God knew my heart was, my intent of my heart was not to fly. <laughs> I mean, not to drive, excuse me. But I was willing to sacrifice and still drive it. I was not looking forward to it at all. At all. No, you know what was I wasn't looking forward to? The drive back. It's the drive back that I was not looking for. Because after the service and everything else, and you man hype and tired, and now you get you know what I'm saying? So I was like, Lord, if it be your will, and he provided. And uh, it was amazing because, like, I shed tears because I was just like, get out of here. Like, Marisol was like, I was like, oh. I was like, I, I just prayed this. And I said, I know by the end, even if it didn't happen yesterday, I knew before we left the end of this week, God would have provided. And I would have bought plane tickets that day to fly out. <laughs> Straight to the airport. It doesn't matter. But... God provided, and I thought about that as I was doing, preparing for this today. I thought about those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, they will be completely satisfied. You know what that means? I didn't want to drive, so God completely satisfied what I didn't want to do. And so he puts, puts us in the air now, right? And it's amazing that we don't even look at those little things as that's God completely satisfying what we need. He is our satisfier. He will completely satisfy us if we just seek after him. What, listen, I can't stress this enough that if you don't love to read the word of God, you're dry. Period. Because this is the bread of life and this is living water. And without it, you have no nourishment. John 3.16 ain't going to just do it for you. You can't give me a 1 Corinthians anymore. Because those are elementary things. We have to get in the word. We have to seek the Father. We have to look for him. Because all those who are hungry, are you hungry? Are you hungry? Are you thirsty? Are you hungry and thirsty for righteousness? Are you hungry and thirsty for the word of God? Are you hungry and thirsty for what he presents as a plate to you? You know, I'm reading Acts now because um, we're, we're in the book of Acts, and I got to read, I got to teach on Acts 8. And Acts 8 is, I mean, the rest of the Bible, um, the rest of Acts just starts getting real spicy and crazy. It's just like, my goodness. But as I'm reading it, what I'm seeing was a people that were hungry. They were hungry for unity. They were hungry for righteousness. They were hungry for doing things the way God wanted them done. They were hungry for a move of God. They were hungry to see other people one for Jesus. That's another thing. You could be selfishly hungry and never give bread to anyone else. You know when Jesus said... When he said, um, 
when, when you fed this person, when you, when you uh, gave water to this person, right? You know, he's not just talking about physical. He's talking about spiritual. He goes, when you do that, it's like you're doing it unto me. Why? Because there are people that are so hungry for God and they don't know how to eat from him. And you get a meal every week and don't share. It's like when you was a kid and you just, you know, it was that favorite meal and you put your arm around the plate and you wait like this because you ain't want nobody to touch your food. You remember that? Yes. People like people that eat fast. Anybody here a real fast eater? I'll be taking my time. Enjoying my food. Mass I'll be mad done. I'll be like, why you eat so fast? When we were dating and when we were early on, she would eat her food so fast, we'd be at a restaurant, I'd be like, why you eat like that? And she's like, I'm just used to it. That's how I eat. I'm like, why? Like, your food ain't going to run off your plate. It's still there. You know? And what happens is we have this wonderful spread of the old and the new covenants and God's word and just the mixture of everything that Jesus did and the, the, the Beatitudes and, and, the, and the calling of the disciples. And, and you have David and you have all the wonderful stories of the New Testament. and all, I mean the Old Testament. And all this is a plate of food to us and we don't share the food. We have to be able to say, if I'm satisfied, somebody else needs to be satisfied too. Yeah, we hoard the word. We hoard. Listen, we become we become uh, 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 gluttons in the spirit. Why? Because everybody, you, you feel good that you've eaten, but nobody else gets food. You can't not be a distributor, a fisher of men. If you're going to do like Jesus, breaking bread and breaking fit and 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 distributing. What did he do? He could have been like, oh, that's enough for us. Y'all on your own. Could you imagine he did that? He'd be like, Lord, just let it rain manna. And just manna came down to those people, and they walked away with the fish and the loaves. The disciples would have been, I mean, it would have been word, and it would have been all right. But that's not what Jesus did. Jesus said, sit them down because they're hungry. Whew. They look thirsty, and they look hungry. And I'm the one that feeds them. So he gets the five loaves and the two fish, and he blesses it up to God, and then he distributes the bread and the fish, and he distributes to the hungry. What happens is we're not hungry anymore. And those that are hungry don't know how to get food right because they get microwave stuff. Nobody wants a microwave meal when you can have a slow-cooked meal. So we have to be hungry for God, thirst after him like the deer after the water, hunger after him like, you've had, like it's your last meal. He's our substance to grow, to be healthy, and be completely satisfied. To grow be healthy, and completely satisfied. So that's my teaching on uh, the Beatitude number six. Is that what we're on? We're number five, number six? Number what? Number six. Next week, Prophet Maris will continue teaching. Amen. We got to stay hungry, guys. We got to stay hungry. Uh, don't, don't let yourself get malnourished by um, entertaining other things that do not give nourishment to our bodies. Uh, we're going to collect offering now, and then we are going to uh, close out. Reminder that Saturday, 11 a.m., we have our A24, A242 gathering. Uh, it's going to be amazing. We're going to have a good time. We're continuing with the series, or oh, not the series, with the teaching foundations. And so make sure that you tune in Saturday at 11 a.m. 
Um, it was good to do worship at home in our kitchen on uh, Saturday. Uh, the snow just came out of nowhere. Well, it didn't come out of nowhere. I just didn't think it was going to be that much. And then when I woke up in the morning, I said, yeah, yeah, no church. There's nothing. <laughs> hey, I'm not getting out of bed. <laughs> I'm not getting out. Um, so just uh, always be uh, paying attention to what the, uh, the Facebook page is uh, putting out. Because we're constantly putting out information, we're putting it out on the link as well. Stay connected to the link so that you can know what's going on here at Hub Vineland and know um, exactly uh, how things are happening, whether we're having service, we're not having service, all that good stuff is important. Um, I want you guys to pray for Prophet Marisol as she gets ready to teach on deliverance at uh, Prophet Alex's convocation this weekend. Um, she goes on at 11 a.m. on Friday morning. So if you are able to tune in, tune in online. If you're able to be there in person and support, that would be amazing. Um, so if you can be there, that's great. And if you can't support online, um, she's going to be teaching on Is Your House Haunted? It's going to be really, really, really good. And, uh, and I'm excited about it. And then pray for us as we leave Saturday, right after the gathering, to fly out to Atlanta to be with Apostle Ryan. We'll be back Tuesday. Um, we won't be here for discipleship kickoff, but I'm excited for uh, Brian and Shirley and what they're going to do with discipleship uh, starting this Monday. And, um, and we will be here Tuesday for uh, the Google um, Microsoft class that we're going to be doing, that Pastor Blake is going to be putting on. So we're excited about that. And uh, so I think that's it. Let's pray and uh, collect offering online as well. Um, and thanks again for joining us online. We love you. We thank you. And continue to support this ministry. Share this with somebody tonight who needed to hear this message, who needed to hear this teaching, because we are just truly blessed to have um, the opportunity to be online with you guys, whether it's here or or uh, YouTube. So let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for uh, this evening. Father, I pray that our hunger will continue to grow. Lord, I pray, Lord God, that our thirst would only be thirsty for you, Lord God, for your water, Lord God. Lord, your word says in Psalm 1 that you will plant us by rivers of living water. And we won't thirst, Lord God, because we're going to be planted by rivers of living water. Our trees will grow. Our fruit will be good, Lord God, because we thirst after you. And we hunger after your word. We hunger after righteousness. We hunger after who you are and what you are doing in our life, Lord God. And, Lord, if there's any dry areas in our life, Lord, I pray, Lord God, you saturate us tonight with your living water, that you saturate us with your presence, Lord God. Any dry areas, Lord God, we ask, Lord God, right now that you drive out any creepy, crawly thing that would try to come in, Lord God. Close the gate now, Lord God, on those dry places and begin to flood us, Lord God, with your living water. We thank you, Lord God. Bless the offering. We thank you for it now in the mighty name of your son, Jesus. Amen and amen. Online, we love you. Thank you again for tuning in with us. We will talk to you soon. God bless. Peace.